what he says? Because if we believed in him, we would do what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Don't you agree? Okay, finish it out. He is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The truth is not in him. What is the truth? The fact is what's in front of you. Okay, so let me show you what the truth is. Give me John 17, 17. Give me Psalms um, uh, 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 119, 142. This is the book of John, chapter 17, and verse 17. Read. The words of Yahweh Shai. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Read. Thy word is true. Thy what? Thy word is true. This word is truth. God. This word is truth. Don't let no one deceive you and say otherwise. This word is truth. Psalms 119, 142. Let's elaborate, elaborate on what the word is now. Okay, what more is what the truth really is. Read. Oh, he's getting there. He's getting there. Remember, Yahweh Shai said in John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So that's the way. That's the way we should be taken. If you go down the wrong way on a one way, what happens? You get into an accident, you get into an accident or die, right? Take it, bad things. So the Lord said, I'm the right way. This is the way you got to follow. So let's see. What's the truth? Read. Psalms 119, 142. Uh-huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, uh -huh. and thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. The law is the truth, my brother. This is the way. Uh, it's, it's, it's repeated. It's redundant. It's over and over in the scriptures. Revelation 22, 14. I want to go over a couple laws with you because I want to teach you now what you got to do. What you got to do. Trust me, we do this week in, week out. Okay, we come out here every seven. That's right. A lot of brothers just throw up their hand, flip the wall, spit at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, go ahead. 22, 14. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Lord said, blessed are they that do his commandments. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. That we may have right to the tree of life, the kingdom to come. Okay, read. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Into the gates into the city. Now I'm gonna prove to you that not everybody can enter into those gates. Give me Revelation 21 12. You're right there. Matthew 19 16. No, hold on. Revelation 21 12. Because he said they enter into the gates. Because these gates ain't for everybody. Like, what do they teach us, first of all? How many gates are there in the kingdom? Uh, well, what they teach us? Right. They what say there's only one. They say one pearly gate, right? Uh, and uh, Peter uh, standing there at the pearly gate. That's what they say, right? So let's see what the Lord said. Revelation 21, 12. Revelation 21 and 12. For now, uh, it had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. And, and, at, and at the gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's the 12 gates. The Bible says there's 12 gates written of the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. That's who's going to get into those gates, kid. That's right. you one of them people. This, this is a blessing. This is what it says in Romans 9 and 4, that the glory belongs to the children of Israel. Uh, okay? So, uh, where have you home? Matthew. Uh, Matthew 19, 16. Come on, come on. 16. Verse 16. Yeah. This is, the book of, this is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? So here's this man asking Yahushai, Jesus, he's saying, what, what do I have to do to get into the kingdom? What, what, what merits my reward of heaven? How do I get in? Is what he says, read. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. So he's given he's given honor and praise and glory to the Father in heaven. Okay, read. But if thou wilt enter into life, he says, if you if you will get in, this is how you're gonna get in. Read. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. This is this is all the way through, front to back. This is what we gotta do. So let's go through some of these real quick. Give me Leviticus 19. Now I'm gonna teach you a couple of laws that um that I see that you ain't keeping right now. So now I gotta inform you. That you got to, because this is otherwise the blood is on my hands. The Bible says, Leviticus, you got a beard, brother? You got a beard? Can you shave your beard? Yeah, we'll keep it true. Okay, so let me show you real quick. Leviticus 19, 20, 27. 
This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27. Uh -huh. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Uh, so don't shave your head bald. Let it grow. You can trim it down. Like, you can get it real, real short. Like, all the way to the baldness almost. But don't shave it. Don't put a razor to your head, the Bible says. Remember, you are a holy people set apart from everybody else. Uh -huh. Don't follow the customs of the heathens. That's what got us in trouble in the first place. So now we got to come back to our heritage. Right. Come back to the ways of the Lord. Okay, read. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Don't destroy your beard. You can trim it down. You don't, it don't got to be as thick as mine. But don't destroy it. Don't take a razor and cut it off. You can take uh, some clippers and, and trim it down, but don't destroy it. This is what the Lord is telling us. This is a commandment that was given to us. Okay? Um, uh, jump up to uh, 16. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer. Uh, so the Lord said, don't be gossiping about your people. This is a law. You know, be, be, be watchful of, or uh, mindful of your words that you speak. The Bible says in Peter, uh, I think it's 1 Peter 4 and 11, if a man speaks, let him speak of the oracles of God. So that's what we should be talking about, brother. Read. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. So the Lord said, look, don't watch your brother's bloodshed. So what does that say? Don't be killing your people. We know thou shalt not murder, okay? We ain't supposed to be out there uh, uh, hurting our people or watching it. So if you see me take off on this, brother, you, you got to say something to me. Ask your brother and say, hey, King, the Lord don't want us doing that. Uh -huh. We got to take care of one another. We got to look out for one another. If we listen to these things, it's going to change a lot for us, okay? Read I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. The Lord said, don't hate your people. Okay? Not everybody. He's saying your people, everybody on that side. That's right. So-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. He's commanding us to not hate each other. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. In other words, he's saying, if you truly love your brother, if you don't hate him like I command you, you are going to tell him when he's in sin. This is a commandment. So if, if I see you commit a sin, the Lord says, if I truly love you, uh, I'm going to rebuke you and teach right. you the right way. Because it's going to preserve your life. It's going to get you on the right track. The Lord commanded his children to do this. Read. Yes, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. This is stop all that gang back. This is stop all that sleeping around with our sister and sister and sister doing all this nonsense that we're doing that to people. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. I am the Lord. He said we got to love our neighbor as ourselves. Numbers 15, 38. Leviticus 11. I'm going to leave you with a couple more, King. And then, you know. Leviticus 11 and 7. Uh-huh. And the swine, though he... Actually, the... actually, start from verse 1. Leviticus 11 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, Speak unto you, King. Uh -huh. saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. No, he's giving us the dietary laws. This still applies to this very day. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, ye shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divided the hook. So or... now the Lord is going to give us um, a detailed description on what we can eat and what we can eat. Okay, read. As the camel, As the camel, we ain't supposed to be eating camels. See, you ask a brother, hey, you shouldn't be eating a camel. You ain't going to hear a brother saying, what you mean I can't have a camel? They ain't going to have no discrepancy there. They ain't going to be, all right, I ain't got no problem with that, right? I ain't, I ain't never had, I ain't never seen no one. The Indian brothers, that's the oh, delicacy. Yeah, yeah see, but, but see, this is why we ain't supposed to be doing it because the Lord said he knew there would be people doing that. Yeah. Uh, right? As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. I mean, he got that broken jaw when he chewed. Okay? You know how they be doing? But he don't got a divided hook. He actually got some paw kind of, but it's a little bit like a. Uh, well, it's not even a hook, it's like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is unclean unto you. The Lord said he's unclean to us, uh-huh. In the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hook. I believe the coney is the rock badger, uh-huh. He is unclean unto you. So he ain't supposed to be eating that stuff, read. 
and the hair, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hood, he is unclean unto you. We ain't supposed to eat rabbits. A lot of people eat rabbits, but the Lord said it's a rodent. Don't eat this stuff. It's bad for you. Okay, read. And the swine. Uh oh, uh oh. Here, 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 here's the one. Now, now, this is this is the one that tripped you up. Everything else, like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I got that, I got that. But as soon as you say, Miss Piggy. <laughs> I'm not the ghost. So I, I, I gotta hang it up now. I, I ain't got no time for the Lord no more because this, my pepperoni, oh. my bacon, oh, I draw the line right there, oh. brother. See, oh. This is what trips our people up. But the Lord gave us laws for a reason. Remember, He said, if we love Him, we're gonna keep His commandments. Okay? That's right. And the swine, though He divide it, though He divide the hood, we uh -huh. love it for this. Yet He cheweth not the cud. Cheweth not the cud. He's unclean to you. He doesn't digest his food as, as, as clean food. Okay, like how the sheep or the deer or the animal, buffalo, cow, they, they have a, a, a different digestive tract. Uh, I don't know if you know this, this is a true fact. The body of a pig has 26 natural parasites. Yeah. Like when you go to the store, you don't ever hear someone say, make sure you thoroughly cook that trout. You don't hear someone say, make sure you thoroughly cook that, that meat, even though you, you should. The Bible says the meat the blood in the hear them say, make sure you cook that pork thoroughly. Why? Because there's stuff in that tear you up again. Yeah. Okay. I was watching this thing on TV. They were catching on pork. Worms. And the worms are coming out. Uh, right. uh, Trichinosis. A lot of people think they got arthritis, got worms in their joints from eating pork. Why do you think our people are, are stricken with high blood pressure, diabetes, okay, depression, anxiety, yeah. all this stuff yeah. has a reason. Right. All because we ain't doing what does say the Lord. Okay? If you try to tell someone have rat for dinner tonight, your brother ain't gonna have a problem with saying, yeah no. That's right. Right? But the Lord said it's the same. He said, that is what the so is this. What do you think a pig is made for? It's a janitor. It's a janitor to eat the the, the, the junk. It's a disposal, just like maggots. If you try to tell uh, someone not to eat no maggots, they ain't gonna have no problem with that, right? But maggots are good. They're they're good for their purpose. If we didn't have maggots, there'd be dead corpse bodies everywhere, right? Maggots are needed. The Lord designed them to do what their purpose is, uh, to eat the dead and rotten flesh. That's right. So yes, all praises for maggots, but they're not for food. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna go eat no poison oak. It's not for them. It's not for them, right? That's right. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, the Lord said. This is a commandment. He said, thou shalt not do it. Read. In their carcass shall, ye, carcass shall ye not touch. The Lord said, when they die, don't even touch them. Okay? He's, he's, now he's dealing with uh, uh, hygiene. And, 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 That's right. He's telling us, don't touch this stuff because there's parasites, there's bacteria that can harm you. Okay? Read. They are unclean to you. They are unclean, right? These shall ye eat of all. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Oh, here's another telephone for people. Another challenge for people, read. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. Whatsoever have fins in the scales. Oh, they so have to have both. Not just one. Like catfish. They got fins, right? There you go, Walker. It's, it's a bottom feeder. It, it, it cleans the disposal of the waters. That's they keep right. the waters clean. What are those uh, those fish on the side of the fish tanks that be sucking all the stuff off the, the glass? Algae. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Now you want to chop that up and eat that as a delicacy because yeah. yeah. you know what's going in that mouth. Yeah. Uh -huh. No different. No different. Read. In the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. It has to have fins and scales. So what does that mean? No shrimp. No lobster. No, lobster no crab. You gotta go throw my shrimp. No oysters. No octopus. That's okay. They ain't supposed to eat none of that stuff. And there, there's has to have the combination of fins and scales. Okay. So we gotta come back to these laws, brothers. The Bible says, He that says he knows him and keep him not his commandments is a what? 
is a liar. He's a liar, and the truth is not in him. So, in other words, if we are looking for our way into the kingdom, Yahweh said, "Keep my commandments. That's right. They're not grievous. They're not too hard. They're only hard for us when we don't want to keep them. That's right. They're only hard for us when we don't want the government of the Lord. Uh, okay. But remember, His laws were given to preserve our life. Give me Psalm 111:10, um, Numbers 15:38. That's another one that our brothers is breaking right now. Read. This is the Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37 and 38. Verse 38. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. So-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Okay, read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. We got to do this, y'all. We got to do this. And it's, it's, it's available now. We got brothers who are actually coming back to this truth. They're waking up all over the place and uh. they're pushing this stuff now. So it, it's around now. Okay, read. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. And I brought it out earlier. Are we still generating? Yes, we are. So the Lord said, as long as we are generating, we got to keep these keep these fringes on. Okay, three. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Uh huh. And it shall be a fringe unto you for a friend. So like, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So this is why we're supposed to do it, okay? It's, it's to help us, to remind us to stay obedient to the Father and His right. Son, okay? Now, Exodus 20 and 8. This is another one that our brothers really struggle with right here, okay? So we don't want to shave off our beards, okay? We want to keep our fringes on. We don't want to be eating abominable foods, okay? Exodus 20 and 8. This is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh-huh. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. What the Lord say? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, a lot of these wicked churches that are pretending to profess the word of God, okay, they're not honoring the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. What is the seventh day, first of all? Because the Lord said the seventh day, right? Give me uh, Genesis 2 from the top. Because a lot of people say it doesn't matter what day. Well, to the Lord it does. So it always has with him. We're the ones who changed that up. Uh, um, uh, Daniel uh, 7 and 25 real quick. Daniel 7 and 25. Just real quick. Hold that. Daniel 7 and 25. I just want to show y'all something. Oh, praise to the Lord's side, brothers. I really, really appreciate y'all standing uh, and listening. You know? It's a blessing to see my brothers getting edified and coming back to this. YouTube, That's right. All right, all right, all right. That's right. We gotta wake up in these last days. That's right. That's right. Esau. That's that Esau. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Uh -huh. He also exalted the horn of his people, uh -huh. the praise of all his saints. Here's the saints, read. Even the children of Israel. Call black, Hispanic, Native Americans. These are the saints, okay? Now bring that out again, huh? Uh, from the top, verse 25. Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. He shall speak great words against the Most High. The so-called white man. Pretending and sitting in the seat of the Lord. Read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. How did he wear out the saints? Slavery after slavery after slavery. That's right. Read. Working our butts off. And think to change time, times and laws. Change the time to laws of the Lord. He told us to implement Sunday. As, as the Sabbath day, the first day of the week. Who did that? Constantine in 323 AD. Yep. The Roman Emperor Constantine gave Man. us Sunday as a worship in honor of the sun god. Man. He conflated uh. the two. He took 
our laws and their laws and said, you're going to get down with this and this is going to be instituted for the, for the rest of this time on this earth. And that is why our brothers are doing the Sunday service to this very day, the first day of the week, Genesis 2. Finish it up. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times and is dividing of time. Uh huh. And we've been given into the enemy's hand. This has been a repeated thing throughout history. Let me talk. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, on the first day, on the seventh day, on any day, on the seventh day, uh huh. God ended his work. Which he hath made, and he rested on the seventh day on from all, day. and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Uh -huh. And God blessed the seventh day. The first day. And God blessed the seventh day okay. and sanctified it. Okay, now go back to Exodus 28. So let me ask you, my brother, what day are we supposed to keep holy? Sixth day, right? Seventh day. Seventh day. So when you look on the calendar, what day of the week is the seventh day? Sunday. Sunday. Uh, or uh, Salaki. No, seventh day is Saturday. First day is Sunday. I said that back. Okay, okay. The first day of the week is Sunday. That's right. The seventh day of the week is Saturday. Okay. okay. Don't read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy, read. So we got to keep this day holy above all days. This is the day that we're supposed to rest and do the things of the Lord. Okay, read. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Uh-huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So the Lord is commanding us to make sure we honor this day, that we keep this day separate and rest on this day. So what we're doing is actually resting in the Lord, doing His work. But we're not supposed to be going, uh, working at a gas station, uh, uh, just doing whatever we want. The Lord said this is a day that we're supposed to take off. Right. Now, if you are in the medical field, that's one thing. Because remember, Yahweh said it's good to do good on the Sabbath, uh, to heal on the Sabbath. But if you're just working at some little weed shop or some hair salon or something like that, no, the Bible says you got to take that day off. We ain't supposed to be doing this. That's Thus saith the Lord. Remember, the beast, he would change the laws and times. Okay? That's what he did. He took us away from what God said the Lord. So give me Nehemiah 10 and 31. Psalms 111 and 10. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is how we become wise, the Bible says. The, the fear of the Lord, read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding. This is how we get the proper understanding. Once we start to apply these laws, he starts to illuminate our mind. That's Baruch 4 and 1. This uh -huh. is how we will be illuminated. And until we, if we're not doing that, until we do that, we're going to be a reprobate. Uh -huh. Which means we're going to be in a dark way of thinking. We're not going to know what's right. We're going to think we know what's right, but we're not. So the Lord said, if we keep these laws, we will have a good understanding on what's going on. Okay, This is what's going to make us separate, holy. Okay? Otherwise, we're just like everybody else. Huh. Walk around here acting like a fool. Okay, Bring that up. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, and verse 31. Read. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So here it is. Um, in the book of Nehemiah, they're saying, look, we ain't, we ain't going to be buying and selling on the Sabbath because the Lord said not to do this. This, this will be breaking his laws, right? That's right. Or on the holy day. We're not going to do this on the holy day. Bring that out, King Exodus 35, 23. Okay. Uh, he wanted to elaborate that we ain't supposed to be buying and selling. Uh. Not just working. We ain't supposed to be buying and selling. Y'all all right, shalom. I hit you up later, right? Shalom. Wow. Shalom, Mark. Shalom. All praises. Exodus 35 and uh, 2 through 3. Gone. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a, a holy day, a Sabbath wow. of rest to the Lord. Uh 
Uh -huh. Whosoever doeth whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. The Lord said this is gonna merit death. This is very important to him. You know, we may not have to go through immediate death now. This is why Yahweh Shai died on the cross for us, is to give us grace, to give us time to get it right. But he didn't die for us to not keep the laws. God. He died for us to not have to die on the spot if we break the laws. That's right. right. Give me a uh, matter of fact, let's uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. But we got to keep the Sabbath day holy, my brother. We got to keep these laws. That's just a few that I shared with you, just to get you going. You got to keep going. Got the fire, you know what I mean? Um, Lord willing, you'll call us, link up with us. You know, we, we host Bible studies every Wednesday night at uh, six o'clock. We come out here every Sabbath at eleven, and uh, we, you know we bring out the truth. We come out to the highways and the byways, just like Christ did. Matthew 20, uh, 22 and nine. He said, "Go to the hedges, to the highways, and to the byways, and bid those to the marriage." That's right. What does that mean? Bring you back to Him. That's right. Remember, we're the bride; He's the groom. Uh, we got to come back to him, okay? Go ahead, uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, and verse 11. Bring it up. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. What does that mean? So if we committed sin, or commit a sin, judgment might not come upon us right away, okay? This is, what the, what it, this is what it's saying, read. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And because we don't get judged right away, it's set in our hearts to just continue to do evil. Well, that judgment is coming. Uh, that judgment is coming. Isaiah 66, 15. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. book of Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 15. Read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. He's coming with fire. He sent his son the first time to die for us, okay? But when he comes back, he's coming back for blood. Okay, read. And his chariots like a whirlwind. Uh-huh. To render his anger with fury. Uh-huh. And his rebuke with flames of fire. He's going to destroy this place with fire. He destroyed the world the first time with the flood. He's going to destroy it the second time with fire, the Bible says. That's the missiles, that, the ICBM missiles, the thermonuclear destruction. There's 13,000 nuclear bombs on Earth. The Bible talks about it. The Bible actually talks about it. Read. For by fire and by a sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And that sword, that's literally dealing with those missiles. That's going to happen to other nations, especially Babylon. This place is going up in smoke, brother. Okay, read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Shall be few. Shall be many. The Lord said the slain of the Lord is going to be many. It doesn't sound like he's dealing with everybody. Okay, read. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Eating what? Eating swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh, uh huh. And the abomination and the mouse. He says he looks at the same difference as eating the mouse. He says these people are going to be destroyed for doing this. They don't think it's serious. When I gave this law, they think that they can just do what they want. He says no. When I command it, I, I meant it forever for their good. But when they don't listen, he says this, this judgment is coming. It might not be executed speedily, but the judgment's coming, the Lord says. Read. Shall be consumed together, says, saith the Lord. He says they're going to be consumed together. 2 Peter 3 and 2. 2 Peter 3 and 10. Uh huh. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to come when no one's expecting it. It's going to happen all surprise, just uh -huh. like the days of Noah. They ate, they bought, they sold, they married. They were going about their daily business, and then boom, it happened. And that's exactly how it's going to happen when he comes back. And we are in the last days, brother. Do not be mistaken. That's All the signs are here. Okay? Read. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Uh-huh. And, and the elements shall burn with fervent heat. This whole place is going up in smoke. Read. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. He said the works therein. What does that mean? The evil. Okay, not just the buildings and everything. He said the evil. This place has to get destroyed in, other, in order for the new kingdom to be ushered in. The new kingdom is coming. But the Lord has to get rid of the old evil one first. And what, I'm, what we're trying to do, brother, is make sure that you're on your way to the kingdom. Uh, we love you. You are our brother. We got uh, the same blood in our veins. Okay? We do. According to the Bible. 
according to the Lord. And so we got to wake up our people in these last days to come back to the Lord. So Hosea 5 and 15, I'm going to give you a two more. Hosea 5 and 15, bring that out. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. This is, this is what the Lord says, read. And all the proud, yea, and all that, that do wickedly shall be stubble. Shall be stubble. That's, that's saying that after they burn up, that's what the result of it is going to be. Read. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. Saith the Lord of hosts, uh huh. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. No nieces, no nephews, no sons, no daughters. And that day, it's, it's going to be a terrible day. Not for those who are listening. Remember, he says, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will be saved, but he who does the will of my Father. Uh, okay, what is the will? The law, of my the brother. Law. The law. We got to keep uh, the law. It really comes down to that. We got to have the faith in the laws. Uh, Hosea 5 and 15. Hosea 5 and 15. I want to pray more close after that. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. The Lord said he's going to go and return to his place until we wake up, until we acknowledge what we've done wrong. We, we need to realize individually our sins and our nation as a people. We need to start praying for forgiveness for ourselves and for our nation and repent. We got to repent and convert and uh, come back to the Lord. Zechariah 1 and 3, we're going to close with this. This is the book of Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 3. Therefore say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord said, turn back to him. This is what the Lord has commanded his children, to turn back to him. Read. And I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, and I will turn back to you. This is what he's telling us. If we turn to him, he's going to turn back to us. Uh, verse 4. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried. He said, don't be like your fathers before, who the, who the prophets tried to tell them to, to convert to tell them to repent from their evil ways. He said, don't be like them. Set the stage, raise the bar now, because the kingdom is at hand, the Bible says. Uh, Read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, uh, turn ye now from your evil way. We gotta repent, brother, we gotta repent and come back to the Lord, Read. And from your evil doings. Uh -huh. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. But the Bible says the people don't wanna listen or hearken. So we got to be those people that are going to turn back to him. Okay? And with that, we'll get Matthew 26. We're going to close. Matthew 26, 6 through 13. Now when Yahweh Shai was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of a very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at him. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Shai understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Amashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala.